needing to be up a notch and I'm just proud of the way the guys, especially at the start of the game, we uh, we got onto it and applied pressure right into the field and um, you know we, we were pretty clinical in terms of uh, when we got our own half and uh, yeah proud of that but uh, you know happy, happy with the performance but uh, all it's done is uh, earned ourselves another week and uh, that's exciting but uh, we certainly won't get ahead of ourselves. We feel the, the World Cup starting now here, now with this game. Um, Ireland is a big rivalry, of course, over the last uh, World Cups and years with them. But I think there will be a fresh start for both and, and everything to play for in those 80 minutes. We know how clinical Ireland are, how tidy they are, how they know there is the system, they know how they play and how uh, efficient they are most of the time. We know the breakdown will be the huge area to, 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 to target and to focus in. They are very good defenders and, and attacking the ball in the uh, breakdown area. So that's an area we have to exploit. And then, of course, working on, on defense and building the game uh, uh, towards our strength. You know, the tight forward game, of course, exploiting our dangerous backs uh, at times and try, trusting our system. The system that is making us uh, play a lot better in, in, in recent games. Um, seen the rugby championship this year, seen the rugby championship last year, last November as well. So we we'll go to a game full of confidence, but huge, of, uh, full of respect to Ireland and how what they are doing at the moment. And and in, in recent years, they have been the form team in, in Europe. Uh, we have some injuries, of course, uh, mainly our tight head prop, Tetas uh, Parro. Just been announced that he's uh, out of of the World Cup for the remaining games. Uh, that's a huge blow for us after we we. We rely a lot on our scrum and our forward game, um, uh, and of course we had uh, the suspension of uh, Galarza and Bosch, uh, two key members of the squad as well. But uh, the team is strong, as I said before, mentally uh, strong from those injuries and for, to, to pull it tight and to really hopefully bring the best of the, of the, of the rest and the people who, who jumped in uh, have done so far a great job and we trust in, in our squad that, 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 we, that we can make it. Oh, look, I think that the faster the game, the better it's going to be for, for the Wallabies. I think, uh, you know, if it becomes a bit of an arm wrestle and a slow game, that'll suit Scotland more than it'll suit the Wallabies. So, uh, well, I think they'll just try and play up-tempo, uh, trying to get dominance in the scrum, which the Wallabies have done so far during the tournament, uh, and then, uh, you know, use their backs at the appropriate time. You know, obviously great footwork out wide and, uh, and great speed as well. So, uh, you know, for me, the faster the game, the better for the Wallabies. Yeah, I mean, I was obviously in the Wallabies when uh, both uh, Matt Giddo and Stephen Moore came into the into the setup and into the environment. And uh, you know, Giddo, he brought a lot of energy, a lot of youth, a lot of enthusiasm when he came through, and he's just matured, I guess. And particularly his time uh, up here in the Northern Hemisphere, playing at Toulon, and uh, and the maturity he's uh, he's got since leaving uh, Australia in 2011, and you know, fantastic achievement for him. And and Stephen Moore, well, he's just toiled away, really. I think he's uh, he's really matured as a person and uh, now he's a fantastic leader amongst uh, amongst the Wallabies and you can just see the influence he's having on the team in terms of that maturity and, and that leadership and for me you know, two guys who, who thoroughly deserve the 100 caps. Well I think so. I think it's important to have uh, David Pocock and his draft for Lauer 
on the field and fit. I think uh, you know, to win the World Cup, you've got to have world-class players, and uh, you know, I think the Wallabies uh, have got a number of world-class players. But uh, you know, those two players are are, are significant players. Um, yeah, but yeah, you know, there's always been so much speculation about uh, the Wallaby scrum. But this tournament, we've seen a huge improvement. You could argue that it's probably the, the scrum of the tournament so far. So, uh, you know, for the back line to be playing on the back of that forward dominance is uh, is, is very exciting for for all Australian fans. This is your most westerly point in Europe. We're on the edge. We're very like the scenery that you see around us. We're rugged, we're rough around the edges, but uh, we're beautiful on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is difficult to field a team, but we manage it. They've actually managed to win this year alone the McGilligan Cup. It was last won by what was known as Dingle Rugby Club in uh, I think it was 1929, 1935. 1928. 24. Oh, good. Oh, that's all right. About 28. It was in the 20s or 30s anyway. It's a long time ago. We train hard. We, we play hard, and if we win, geez, we celebrate. Like we won the biggest cup in the world. If we lose, we celebrate. Like we won the biggest cup in the world. Thank you.